Hi, and welcome to Save Our Bookstores improvised podcast, video show, discussion. And we have uh, an incredible group here today. Our host, Cassandra Dalit, can't be here today because she's an essential worker. And thank you, Cassandra, for doing the important work. Um, please uh, log into her uh, badass bookworm podcast and listen to Cassandra. She's got wise words to say and good poetry to share. My name is Zarina Zabriskie and I'm a San Francisco author and um, a writer and uh, currently a manager of the Globus Books, um, the books that specializes in Russian literature, in Russian and English, and all books related to the former Soviet Union subjects that has been in San Francisco Bay Area since 1971. It will be 50 years next year, and I'm here to see that it makes it to the 50th anniversary. Uh, so I'm proud to introduce everyone. Um, Kate uh, Razo has been here from the first meeting. Thank you, Kate. And Kate is the owner of, um, K uh, of the Cat Alley. Alley Cat books and Dog Eared books. I, I'm a little dyslexic, so when I mix the words, please forgive it. And um, there will be a full bio of Kate in our previous podcasts and in the comments, so you can read all the wonderful things that Kate has been up to. We have uh, Joel Ace and in the background, Tony Ace of the Rebound Books in San Rafael, who also been here and very, very proactive about this whole initiative from the very first meeting. Uh, and that's an incredible store uh, in San Rafael and all the details will be again in the previous podcasts and shows and in the comments, please read. Um, and Denise Sullivan, who joined us last meeting. And uh, Denise is a very experienced uh, in the bookseller industry. She's also a writer, a journalist, an editor, and a lot of amazing things. Please read her bio in the comments. And today we are very happy to bring you new participants. And uh, we have Josiah Louise uh, Alderet uh, from City Lights. Yay, applause. Yay, City Lights. Yeah, and a short bio uh, for Josiah. Josiah is a full-blooded Poco Spanglish speaking poeta from LA area Bahia, who creates and hosts the Latin reading series Speaking Axolotl, the third Thursday of every month in Oakland. Sounds fascinating. He is the Zin Bahia and books linger at City Lights Books. Josiah's book of poems, Baby Axolotls, E. Old Porches, correct me if I'm not saying it right, I don't speak Spanish, is, thank you, is being released this year from Black Friday Press. We are also greeting today um, Bill um, Petricelli, who is not online currently, but might be joining us later. And uh, please uh, take a look at his bio. He's managing uh, the book Passage in Marine and uh, the book Passage in Corta Madera. Uh, also a, an incredible list of, uh, of uh, things that Bill has been doing in the community. There are other stores down in the, uh, in the uh, ferry building in San Francisco. Incredible. Please, please check all the comments because uh, th there's so much that we can't list everything that people in this group have been doing for the books, for the book lovers in the city. And we also have um, Calvin Crosby, who is the executive director of California Independent Booksellers Alliance. Uh, and that uh, alliance has 355 members and a short uh, buy here. So uh, Calvin is a longtime Bay Area bookseller uh, who haven't rotated his time between Book Passage Marine and Ferry Building and um, uh, including locations in Laurel Village, Chestnut Street, as well as Opera Plaza. And after many years on the board of directors, uh, Calvin became the executive director of the Northern California Independent Booksellers Association. Um, there's a great development this, this year, uh, this uh, organization, Northern California and Independent Book Associate, uh, uh, Alliance, has joined with a sister organization in Southern California. 
Uh, so check that out also in the comments. And also great news for all the other booksellers as a response to the pandemic, um, they have waived dues for this year and offer all services of all uh, California books just for free for this year. Uh, so that's an incredible resource. I know that Globus Books is uh, joining and I recommend everybody to check it out. So thank you everyone for joining and being here. Um, I know it's an Easter Sunday. I wanted to mention, it just occurred to me today, uh, the Russian word for Easter, for, for Sunday, means literally resurrection. And we have been gathering for our meetings every Sunday. So in a way, I like symbolism of all kinds. And so I, I hope it's symbolic and I hope that we find the way to bring our book stores back in thank full you. power as a result of our discussion. So thank you for joining. Um, so we have um, about 40 minutes to go and uh, we will be doing a very brief round so everyone can in two minutes sum it up whatever happened or the positive developments for the last week uh, or if you're new to the group uh, just tell us something that you feel is relevant um, to the crisis to the bookstore you are uh, in charge of or whatever it is you feel like sharing with the group um, I'll start with the uh, Globus Books. We have been working uh, online. All of our employees are still working. Nobody lost their job. And we have three affiliates, one in Moscow, one in Tbilisi, Georgia, and one in San Francisco. Uh, and we are helping each other. We're working on the online sales via Ingram um, and adjusting our software so we can upload the lists of whatever is available in Russian. Uh, or in English with the Russian translations to our website. And we already started to sell books and there is interest, thank God. Thank you, uh, our customers and fans. And um, we've also been very active with the presentations and shows. We have story time and play time for little kids and for uh, teens uh, in Russian that uh, is that are, both shows are popular with their parents who are stuck at home with their kids. So uh, we've been preparing and doing the YouTube shows. We're also doing uh, future shows and a panel uh, of our translator series that we were planning to do live, but now we'll be doing it on Zoom. So next week there will be a killer translator uh, panel on air with a best leading translators of the LGBTQ poetry from Russian into English, which of course is a big issue, you know, because this community is very underrepresented and threatened back in Russia. So we're very proud to be doing that still. And um, Kate, can I pass it to you now? Um, sure, uh, what have we been doing? Not an awful lot, I'm continuing to uh, fill out applications for grants and loans. That process is moving along slow by slow. The money is getting used up. I'm starting to get some responses saying, <clears throat> sorry, the money's gone. Um, other than that, kind of brain, just brainstorming the future of the stores, taking this time to really think about the strengths and the weaknesses of the stores and I continue to go by once a week and water the plants and touch the stores and move some artwork around. I mean, there's not a lot I can do. I do listen to people's comments as they're walking by on Valencia. A lot of people have boarded up their storefronts and I, 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 think, it's, I think it's bad faith. I have had people say to me that they find it a great comfort to just look through the window and see the books. Yeah. Um, besides that, somebody put out a free book box in front of Alley Cat, so people have been doing their own book exchange. Mm -hmm. um, not an awful lot to report other than what we're going to talk about later, but you know, I'm, I'm an optimist. So, oh, I did, a, I did an interview with the Chronicle and an interview with the, um, with the Examiner. Thank you. So, yeah. mm. And Denise? Uh, not, not a whole lot, uh, in the United Booksellers world, which is our informal coalition of San Francisco booksellers, but I have checked in with all of our member stores 
uh, to see what they need. And we're still posting updates as far as who's selling, who's uh, running funding campaigns, who's streaming, you know, one, one man, one woman shows from their storefronts. That's all happening. And that's at our website. And um, yeah, other than what we're going to talk about in a minute, not too much else. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, and thank you for having this resource page. That's very helpful, I think, for everyone. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, uh, then, uh, Joel, would you like to? We have, uh, we've been applying for, uh, you know, some sources of support like, uh, like everybody has, and, you know, waiting to hear back uh, about what's there and what isn't. Uh, we took all of our books out of the window and put in one book in each window. It's a single copy of Ram Dass's Be Here Now. So that's the only book in our window, which is sort of a, a wake-up call. I don't know. Uh, there's a bear in the window. We're supposed to put a bear in the window. Hopefully people will be able to bear with us. <laughs> and, uh, that's the idea. You know, nothing particularly brilliant there. But aside from that, we're just throwing our energy into this kind of thing, hoping as a result of this meeting, to have something firm that we can present to whoever in our own county would be able to leverage some support. And that's, that's we're really at the right step to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We hope so too. And um, Josiah, would you, would you give us a little uh, sum up on, on your incredible development this week, please? Yeah, well, uh, hola everybody. Uh, City Lights was really, really blessed this week. Um, it was a milagro. We, we, uh, put up a GoFundMe account. Um, I gotta get off these, these cats. I actually think that the pandemic was a, a plot started by cats to have us at home <laughs> or, or to they could use us as great, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so City Lights, um, they posted a GoFundMe account for the folks that don't know uh, this week. And um, it was so humbling. Within two days, they had exceeded their, the amount that they had asked for. and. I checked it before we came on and it's still going, you know, people are still donating. So um, it was a real blessing for City Lights because um, since the shutdown happened, they haven't uh, fired one of their employees. They've continued to pay us our full wages as well as cover us our medical benefits. Um, you know, so it's been, it's been, a, it's been a blessing uh, for the employees and for the bookstore to see the response from the community, because this is a, you know, part of this, the effects of the pandemic for us is sort of the dis distancing that we feel from each other. So it, it, we were really, we knew that City Lights was in people's hearts and that bookstores are still in people's hearts, you know, but we, it was just nice to see that happen. And, um, you know, as grim as, or as strange, or as dark, if you want to use the word dark, as this situation looks, you know, for me, I was looking at the donations that people sent to the bookstore. And you know, except for maybe three of a couple of, there's a few well, uh, well-known writers that donated some money. But you know, if you look at all those donations, those are all working people. Every single one of those donations is like $5, $10, $8, you know. There was writers and local poets that I recognize giving money who I know don't have money to give. So it's like the love is there for the bookstores. Is there? It's going to happen. All all these bookstores are going to pull through. It's just a way of getting the word out there and stuff like that. So so for us for for City Lights, it was a very inspirational week, and I'm I'm just hoping we can transfer some of that energy and keep it going. You know, because the community, the Bay Area, they love their bookstores, and it, it is an impossibility to imagine the Bay Area landscape without them. So you know, it's going to happen. Thanks. I think it's a great it's a great challenge to to put forward to other communities of the fact that they can uh, show their support for their local bookstores in a tangible way. Yeah, yeah. It shows an example because every one of us is a city lights within our own small communities where there are not a lot of bookstores. Yes. That's yeah, true. yeah. That that's fantastic, and thank you for that, and thank you for this update, and we'll follow up on that and. Uh, and I want to pass it over to Calvin now. And can you do a little sum up of what you guys are doing as, as an association? And uh, Well, the first thing we did was we opened um, 
with the first stay at home order, uh, the board was adamant about opening the organization up to all of California because we do need each other now more than ever. Um, so in that we're also doing messaging. We're working with the small business majority to do some webinars to, to help our, our members uh, apply for loans, kind of sort through the paperwork, as well as we have a, a resource page that, that pretty much gets updated daily with anything new. It feels like every time we post something, there's a new piece of information. Um, and also the engagement of social media is helping us because our stores are now using that much more dynamically than they have in the past. So we're finding that it's a great method of communication, particularly in spreading the word for the GoFundMe's and stuff at the stores that are doing that. So we're, we're actively listening a lot. <laughs> it's really nice to get those updates from you. I want to Thank say you. there's so much stuff to filter through and it's nice to get the focused information that is maybe probably relevant <laughs> at least for about five minutes <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so we also have an ongoing yeah. zoom town hall for all bookstores and that's tuesdays at 10 uh, and just uh for security you have to email me and i'll give you the password to come in but it's 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 inclusive. It can be publishers. It can be sales rep. It, it can be frontline booksellers, kids booksellers, like whatever your oh, definition great. is. Oh, that's um, a great resource. They've, yeah. 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 They've, they've been really good conversations and, you know, I'll definitely report back on this. On Tuesday. Is there well. anything to, sorry to break rank here, but is there <laughs> anything that you think that we could be doing in particular that would be helpful besides what we're already doing? Or is there. I, I think what you're doing is huge. Um, we're in this in the newsletter that comes out Wednesday. We're we have uh, a template for language if you want to work with your local municipality to become an essential business and stay open in some capacity. Oh, nice. Um, and what we're finding is there's more movement if the stores work really you know in their neighborhood, in their town, in their city, in their county than there is if they try to work on state level. So we'll be we'll be putting that in. Um, but I think the language that you guys have been talking about is another thing where we can we can use this same mechanism to to get that out there because it, it does the the arts we are arts destinations yeah. Yeah. you know um that 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 is fantastic yeah i've well, had people five people in my store at a time i'd be okay with that when <laughs> someone yeah. becomes when someone becomes an essential business within a certain governmental entity like a city what does that mean does that what does that do for you, essentially? I'm, I'm new to this. It's, well, it means you could open if you're essential. Yeah, um, or oh, you could oh, okay. have cur curbside pickup, or right. you know, you could you could be in your store. And, and we are hearing reports of, particularly in the more urban areas, where it is much more restrictive than it is as you I'm get. Very interested in that process. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, we, and again, like because we we are on a timeline and we are just oh, yeah. about to jump into <laughs> that major discussion yeah. and that we want to do here. This is great and we can continue this discussion via email or, or start a different Zoom. So uh, today uh, we are going to decide on, as we have established, basically three texts. One will be a brief petition that will go to the general public on a platform, uh, say change.org. It will have a little supporting text that will go as an email distribution uh, and each store and each participant of this group can forward this petition and ask people on social media or via email or in person to join in and sign the petitions. So we can collect their um, signatures. And the third text, that at least the way I see it, and we can discuss that, would be the umbrella uh, petition text that will be recommended to all the bookstores that want to participate in this initiative or this movement and that could be then customized depending on the bookstore needs because we're all different jurisdictions are different laws are different art refund programs are different so that will be just a recommendation that each store then can uh, customized and change as needed. So we're looking at three texts here. Number one priority is the one that goes online, I believe, because uh, the 
third tax, the one that will be going to the authorities to say the mayor of San Francisco, London Breed from San Francisco, will be using all the signatures that will be collecting via the change.org petition. So we won't be just sending the petition to London Breed from bookstores. We'll be sending it supported by hopefully thousands and thousands of our fans and book lovers. So this is the core of what we need to do. Uh, and before we decide on how we're gonna do it and what's the most efficient way to finalize it, I wanna mention that for the last week, all of us worked very hard and got uh, some really great developments. We got, we invited and got confirmations from some of the prominent writers in the Bay Area. Uh, for my part, Rebecca Solnit is totally on board and will support us. I'm waiting to hear from Gary Stengart. Um, uh, I also uh, got the referral to two people in the community investments programs who are responsible for this kind of money. So we have the lead. We didn't speak to them yet, but we know where to go, or at least the city of San Francisco. And um, uh, what else from the money there? for what the, you said they're responsible for the money? They're responsible for uh, community investments programs. And these referrals were given from a person from the San Francisco Arts Commission who thinks that this okay. is the right context for us. So I'm okay. going to follow up on this. Another okay. important Wait. development is that on Tuesday, um, Leapcrank is having their meeting and they're very eager to help us and get their resources uh, to apply to, to our initiative. So we want to finish uh, our text, our drafts by Tuesday evening for sure. Uh, yeah. And uh, that having said, um, oh, also important thing, uh, Pete uh, from Green Apple is also on board. He, they will sign the petition after having seen the drafts. Uh, they're just looking for the final uh, text. He just couldn't join us today. Okay, okay, so with all of that, who wants to uh, start the project? What is the most efficient and time efficient, I want to say, way of editing and finalizing the drafts? that we um, designate a person to do it and then, then they finish it and then they send them to us. Okay. Should, should I, I would like to, I, I would, I would like to ask uh, some uh, assistance and advice from Calvin while we have him here today, because it, it might take a little rewind here, but I'll, I'll be brief. Okay. Um, back in the day, this is goes back to when Hutt was with NCIBA, and we called on him for two projects, Save Marcus Books and Save Modern Times, okay? And the thing that we heard in those campaigns over and over and over from the city officials, and I mean city of San Francisco, was crowdfunding is your answer. You know, don't come to us launch a crowdfunding campaign. Now we're talking five years ago, right? That was their solution. We see City Lights, God bless them, and thank God for this crowdfunding campaign. But they just demonstrated to the city God and everybody that crowdfunding is the solution. If we want money from the city, we need the language. And if you have that language, I think we might have better luck at state arts councils and that kind of money because city of San Francisco, I said it before and I hate to be a bummer, but the London breed office and administration has done nothing for bookstores and I don't expect they will. Well, Calvin, so, help, you know, SOS. What about, what about mayor Lee leaving us money in his will? I know that was a totally random thing. He well, gave, he gave those bookstore grants. I know you and I chatted about that briefly. I mean, that was the beautiful I mean, gift that he that was, left. That was, but that, that was, was a moment. We can't ask yeah. him again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think I think that two things. Number one, I think that uh, uh, too many crowdfundings will burn people out because mm -hmm. everybody's got a limited resources, and there's going to be crowdfundings for all kinds of things. 
Second of all, but I don't think it's a bad idea to, to, to consider it and to do it. Second of all, I think once we develop uh, community support, we're in a position to turn to the city and saying all these people are registered to vote and they're looking for you to sign this thing and to join us. So there's a certain amount of leverage in both directions. If we get a statement of endorsement of the importance of bookstores from somebody in the, in the city, it could help the crowdfunding. If we develop a crowdfunding in certain circumstances in some particular towns, it could leverage money from those particular communities. And everybody has to know their own community to know which of those, uh, which of those hooks to throw in the water first. I don't have that answer. Calvin, what do you think? So I think number one, San Francisco has no chain bookstores. Well, so it has right there, it's not a chain. They're locally owned and independent. What, what, I thought a, a chain was two or more. Uh, um, I, People, people try San to Francisco, insult me by yeah. saying I'm a chain. <laughs> yeah, San Francisco has a ban on I want to say it's eight stores. And so by San Francisco oh, okay. standard, it okay. counts as a chain, but it's 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 still locally owned and operated. It's it's still a mom and pop with a lot of children out there. Um, so San Francisco already doesn't have, you know, the, the uh, Barnes and Nobles, um, and you can't really count Target <laughs> as a bookseller. Um, so I think with that, the, the community is already attached to our mm -hmm. stores. And the San Francisco Chronicle bestseller list is what is still the NCIBA, the Northern California Independent Booksellers list. Um, we're actually keeping two separate lists because of that. Um, so I think there's, in the DNA of San Francisco, there's support and there's some awareness. I agree with Joel, if we, all, if, if too many crowdsourcing, isn't going to work, and not everybody has the leverage that every other store has. You know, the the mailing list that Joel would have in his store compared to the mailing list that, let's say, Book Passage has. Like, it, it's it's apples and oranges. So you're not mm -hmm. you're not going to get the same same kind of uh, buy. -in. I think in our communication to other people, along with the petition, we can certainly send the suggestion of crowdfunding um, with a few with a few. Uh, suggestions about how to do it so that that again is a tool that those people in the circumstance where they can take advantage of it could use it. Well I maintain that no one thing is going to work here. We have to keep trying different yes. things. What else do you think Calvin? Um, I think we do have to keep trying different things. So um, I just blanked. <laughs> you have a big idea. Well, I think um, Calvin, if you could look at if <laughs> Calvin, if Calvin could look at that document to see if we're on the right track um, in terms of asking for state and local funding, yeah. right? Um, in that in that template, right, that yeah. would help us because I think that's a, a piece that we're missing. Uh, and someone with the the weight, you know, the an organization with your weight. Um, to guide us through this because you know well, also, we need help. also potentially your weight but your your name w is very useful it, it's it's not a bunch of right. belly aching booksellers it's, it's <laughs> i i, I want to jump in <laughs> here guys um, oh sorry uh, um bill bill petricelli also his legal mind is Mm -hmm. It's our organization's secret asset. Yeah. So um, if we, I, when if I look at it, the other person want him to that we out. haven't talked to who is incredibly savvy, and I meant to call her, is Amy Thomas over at Pegasus. Yes. Amy's, Amy's amazing. I will call her today. Mm -hmm. and, That's great. And, and so, get her in on this next week. Friends, we have. We have nine minutes to go, so I'm going to sum it up here. So um, if I hear that right, I will uh, forward Calvin the drafts to you again, so you can take a look. I want from my um, angle to reinforce that I think that the politically and strategically correct thing here would not be to directly ask for the funds, but to ask for the status of cultural institutions, because that would be the long-term solution. Otherwise, we're just asking for money like everybody else. We don't want that. We want to be considered the cultural institutions, just like museums, libraries, and well, art. Also the way Sorry? Also, the way, the way that you're stating it, you, when you ask a question, you don't want to ask it in a way which is so easy for them to say no. 
Yeah, that too. We, we need to look at the language, but the point is that we want to have the status of cultural institutions, say like MENA Gallery, that is a for-profit organization that runs for-profit events, but has the status of cultural institutions. So there is a precedent. And based on that, we would want to qualify for the financial support. And that's our story. And so- we can yeah. ask them specifically for that designation, and we can ask them along with that for any other means of support that they are in a position to offer so that they can figure that out. The hook is out there if they want to bite it. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I will forward the, all three drafts, just in case, to Calvin Bill, who we know is a lawyer and hopefully is listening to us, and everybody else in this group again. And if I may ask for everybody's final edits by tomorrow midday, is this sure. a reasonable? Sure, that sounds great. And I would be expecting to get the um, response and edits from everybody involved or whoever wants to do some edits by that time. And at that time, we'll combine it all together uh, and resend it to the group and just finalize it by the end of the day tomorrow, Monday. Yes. And that will go to Litquake. That will go online. I will put it yes. online right away on Monday yes. and we'll yes. start sharing it into the groups. And so then what is your process? You're thinking that we're going to collect signatures? Yeah. Like yeah. That, what, are, what exactly are we doing with these with these letters and these petitions? I sent I sent a, one of those versions to Ann Patchett and Amy Tan and Isabel Allende. Who who knows? They get back to me. But I think what what are we asking people to do with these besides know this thing? Know and sign it. So we'll be the the platforms collect the signatures, and then we will. It will be shown how many signatures we have collected. And because we are not asking for money, there will be more signatures. I know it because I worked for the platform organization briefly. So that. I, so this is move on. This is move on. You're thinking. I need to move. I need to have the document in a simple document, not any kind of cloud. I, don't I will do, do that. that, Joe. Send me, got, send me the document. And the other thing is that I'm most, we're most interested in sending it to other bookstores so that within their own communities, they can start the ball rolling. So the petition to writers is fine. That's nice icing on the cake. I'm after meat and potatoes. Well, I think Calvin, we Calvin is the one that, in our own community. I think Calvin is the one that has the ear of so many booksellers. Yeah, we'll run it in the newsletter if it's ready to go for a That's week, great. I mean, so we have we want to think about the dispersal technique here, really. We have five. We're not hiring teenagers to stand on the corner with a with a bullet no. board. No. No, but uh, in five minutes. No, I would like to. To go, what will I know? Well, what we'll have by say by the end of the week, if the petition goes online, we'll have say yeah. ten thousand signatures and also signatures by major writers in this nation or in this city, and, and that there. we'll have a lot of sorry. And they're going to share it. And I mean, County. the whole thing is that people share it, is that it keeps going out, is that yes. we don't just have this little pod. Yes. And then that document, supported by 10,000 signatures, Rebecca Solnit, I don't know, Lev Tolstoy, will go to London Breed, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, but I mean, the whole idea is that London Breed, I, I hate to say it, but Denise is right, London Breed is a very hard sell. Well, yeah. it will go to whoever, like not just London Breed, but everybody. That will be probably a subject for the future discussion. Whom exactly we put on the list for San Francisco and say, Joel, for you, San Rafael, right? Oh, and, yeah. Calvin, and Calvin will probably have some input on that and we'll, we'll all figure out. Well, and Diane, then, can, you, can you go to your City Lights people and see if there's any, anything that you guys can do to help on this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I was saying, for the event next Friday, I, I would love to have an, a, a way to like direct people to this, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely, we have a staff meeting tomorrow at noon uh, through Zoom. So um, I mean, I can, I can even email them whatever we have at that point so that they can kind of check it out too. So if they can put it on their platform, there's an awful lot of eyes looking at you guys right yeah. now. 
That was a lot of incredible press. I read all those articles. Yeah, we even got the New York Times word today. So. And it's been a okay. really, really nice ripple effect. Well, and also I, I go <laughs> reaching out to uh, a lot of the other writers in the Bay Area. Uh, uh, not, not. I mean, there's the big ones too, but there's also in our own communities. There's so many. I'm thinking that we'd really get around. Uh, so. That's Ingrid Rose does come through. I do a bunch, so we'll do so, that as well. Right. But Thank yeah, you. Yeah, tomorrow I'll, I'll pass it along. Thank you. Don't forget. Don't forget. No. Yeah. No, it's uh -huh. all recorded. I will make notes. I will send it to everyone, so no need to memorize anything. You'll have it in written. Three okay. minutes to go. One final okay. thing. One of the next steps to follow up will be actually with the press. And Lily from San Francisco Chronicle, who interviewed you, Kate, she, she's already aware, and I'm talking to her. She said that her editors might... Okay make her do the follow-up so uh, engaging the press on this process and Calvin maybe on your side as well and everyone in the group would be also like uh, going on the on the moment well, Denise? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I need to well I was gonna say Denise, Denise and I had a long conversation the other day long conversation the other day about the future of bookstores in San Francisco. And she was saying, you know, there's a good chance that newspapers, all the media is gonna look very different after this is all over. And writers are looking for stories. Writers are looking for stories to pitch to the media. So this is very, this is very good. This is very promising. I need to talk about our needs up here in the rural counties. We do not have the atmosphere of a community like San Francisco where a large producer is gonna mean anything to the politicians. I have been in a bookstore, I've had that door open for every week for 15 years, and I've rarely seen any member of the city government walk into my bookstore. There are a few. Well, let me tell you what London Green was in my store. Yes. We, <laughs> we, we, we have need. less than a minute to go. Sorry, so we'll have... Well, no, we need, well, I need we to say this. To we email. need a document. Thank you, Zarina. We need a document that's going to address the leverage that's going to get them to be interested. And I don't think a petition from writers is going to do it. Yeah. We don't know what's going to do it. We don't we are know about to go off air. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. Thank you. Whatever Thank ideas you. did not get covered, please send them to me. Watch us at YouTube, Globus Books, and Badass Bookworms, Cassandra Dalit. Thank you, everyone. And we are Thanks looking forward to talking to everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Have a great Thanks. Sunday. Bye. Thank you. Thank I'll call Amy. Bye-bye. Bye. Adios. Ciao, ciao. Bye.